Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. It's a Bitcoin Podcast. The only one that's making your money is you. So said yo instead of hey because like 80 percent of podcasts say hey everybody and i'm not gonna do that could be like joe rogan and say what's up freak bitches what's up freak bitches i do like that he says that um, you you're slowly turning me into a huge rogan fan Corey. like it's a it's a, it's been a listen- white guy thing <laughs> you've been listening to rogan since we were in school and you're always like you gotta listen to this new episode of rogan and i'm like sure man <laughs> but now I'm like actually listening to bits and pieces of it and I actually really like it. Um but anyways, um hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin podcast. This is episode 281. If you missed episode 280, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go back and listen to that one before you listen to this one. Um but uh yeah, I'm the host that talks first, D. Host that talks other times, Dr. Corey Petty. And we have a guest today, a returning guest, friend of the show, friend of the network. Taylor, say hello. Hello, everyone. Taylor from my crypto. Welcome back, Taylor. I am happy to be back. Back in blonde. I'm blonde now. Super blonde. It's official. I got to change my Twitter profile picture so that... <laughs> so people know. Dude, it's been funny, though. It's been funny in real life. <laughs> because people... <laughs> Okay, there's that's that, right. there's that um, <laughs> what do you call it? There's like the moment of recognition, right? And there's like a period of time in between when they uh, like see me and then when they recognize me. And it's really entertaining really? for me. At least. Oh, yeah. Like, it's really funny. Yeah. So uh, mm. what's been up? What's been, what's been going on since the last time you've been here? How's, how's life? Um, I think a lot's been up. Um, I don't, I, it's been a while. Um, it's been good. It's been crazy. Uh, my daughter is now 15 months old and Hello. that's a whole new adventure. She like walks and runs and jumps, uh, and does stuff. Um, and then, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like every day is a new thing, you know? Um, she'll, like she'll do things that that make you just kind of like sit there and look at her and go like, "Holy crap! Like you're you're really a tiny human." Um, <laughs> wow. Because uh, for so long they are really just a blob. They're not really, you know, they they <laughs> they like smile, but they don't really smile at things. Not a really human. <laughs> it's not a real human yet, you know. The semblance, but now, yeah. the semblance of a human, the making of a human. <laughs> Yeah, it's like an adorable blob, and now it's it's a whole new thing. Um, we were Has talking she said about her first word yet? Oh yeah, so her first word was actually not a word; it was a phrase, uh, and it was "What's that?" Hmm. And that that "What's that?" means like "What is that?" Meaning like you know, like she'll point at something and say like "What's that?" But also it means like "I want that," and "Why aren't you giving me that?" And "Hey, like <laughs> pay attention to me that." <laughs> <laughs> um, just about everything, and then her second word was was kind of like meow, but it's um it's not saying like meow. It's like actually making the sound that a cat makes. Onomatopoeia. Um, yeah, I can't make the sound because I don't speak cat, but she does. <laughs> um, and the funniest thing is that so Jordan will um put like a little like a cats meowing youtube video on and then there's like a chorus of cat sounds coming from the phone and also like she'll make a chorus of cat sounds herself and it's actually 
hard to know which, like, what's a cat and what is my daughter. <laughs> a future, a future. What was that guy on uh, all the Police Academy movies that made all the noises? Are you talking about Beastmaster? I don't think that's what I'm talking about, but uh, I didn't. I didn't think you were either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's from Police Academy, but all right. I know what you're talking about. High Tower. Yeah. yeah. High Tower was his name. I don't even know why I know. Why do I know that? I, Interesting. I <laughs> is it because he was the black dude on the Police Academy movies? So you just kind of. I think it's. I think you're absolutely right. That's. <laughs> I identified with him. Uh, so we, we're going to talk about some crypto today. Yeah. Um, I had. I, I was on the uh, aeroplane. Um. And I had, a, I was thinking to myself that, um, you know, crypto, we've been talking about mass adoption now for like a decade. And I feel like we will be talking about mass adoption for several more. But I also feel like what slows down that is um, uh, crypto has a tendency to uh, attract some very fringe, fring- people with very fringe ideals um, in large, large amounts, like the yeah. I think somebody just said in the Slack and then bounced the other day. They're like, man, crypto uh, attracts some people that are kooky. (laughs) That's that's a really nice way of putting it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, you're not wrong because it does. And and being, and this is coming fresh off of that Dr. Rowe interview that we had, like being that it does attract such kooky individuals, um, it, does it stand a chance of ever being massively adopted if it's so easily adopted by some of uh, some people that just like they have the ideals that are so far out there that it's like people are just going to ignore it or think they're not serious or, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, what... it's uh, I mean, it's generalized money. And it, but like it got started off from uh, like a a hard set of idealists in a lot of ways, right? Like it was, and then because it was like the cypherpunk movement and digital money, which so like the main goal of it, or like what, what kind of, I think started it off was the idea that we don't want to rely on third parties to first to transact. And like the first people to latch onto something that's brand new and willing to go through the painstaking process of using it, are usually the ones that are heavily i like have have some type of heavy ideology because they're willing to be like i don't know I think, I don't think encumbered is the right word but like um they're willing to be frustrated through the user experience because they want the the idea of the technology so bad and that's what the like the beginnings of anything is it's like the, the beginning users are the ones that like really believe or could use that technology to push whatever like ideological vehicle they have and that's what happened is and that that usually tends to bring in the french the kooky people and then as it becomes more and more mainstream typically you build businesses that take like cut back on some of those ideologies like you see things like like coinbase would never have flown in the beginning days of bitcoin coinbase right no especially not in its state right now yeah you know like it yeah it's um I think there's like a couple different things going on. Like one, it's um, it's definitely like it's hard to wrap your head around. And if you think back to like when the when the white paper first came out, um, it's yeah, it's hard to wrap your head around. So the people that are going to wrap their heads around it are either like working in that sort of you know super technical industry in some capacity and have the capacity to understand the white paper or yeah. be in touch with Satoshi or whatever. Um, but then the next wave of users even like they, yeah, they have to have the ability and the desire to like dive into it, you know? And so that's what I think, um, we first saw sort of like, you know, the libertarians and, and the people that were, you know, already having sort of, whether they be like thought experiments or like actual actionable things, um that that was a rebellion i guess of sorts against the state of the government or the state of the economy um and then as it grows you know still i feel like there's a lot of similar personality traits right like you have to be you have to be technical you have to be willing to uh 
put up with some like hot mess stuff. Um, you have to be willing to take on the risk, right? Whether that's like the price risk or the security risk or whatever, like you have to be willing to do that. Um, and you have to like, like you really have to be able to dedicate some time to figuring it out. You think it's you still know? that way? And, um, I think that, that there are ways to sort of get in without um, maybe fully getting in, right? So like Square Cash and like, you know, there's a few apps that just like you can just like, uh, I guess, speculate on Bitcoin, but Cash you're not app. actually really, yeah, you're not actually like, like holding it. You I know what I mean? Coinbase, like, man. Coinbase is, 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 Coinbase is that with the option. exposure to it. Um, yeah, but it's like, it's, it's, it's a halfway between it's not, it is a wallet. Um, and it's very easy to offload that money onto a wallet that you actually control. And they even have some solutions where you control part, like part of the keys. Yeah. So it's more like a multi-sig. Yeah. But it's not. Like cash, you don't do anything. Cash, you just are like, buy Bitcoin. Like, yeah. you don't, that's it. It's yeah. crazy. You don't even get to use it. You can't use it anywhere. You're just like, I bought it and then I sold oh. it. And that's all you could do there. Yeah. And you can't move it. You can't send it to like an external wallet. Um, you you just like have this sort of line in the database that says like, mm. quote unquote, you bought this and that's, then you sold yeah. this, you know, and, and whatever that means. Um, I'm not sure what it means actually. Like for it, just means that you're speculating on it, I guess. So for yeah. people that are that are OGs like us, is that getting in? Is that for me? I don't think so. Like I don't think that that's getting in because it's not anything you know, different. You're just you're just, it's just speculation or kind of like it uh, is. Someone it's told how... me to buy this, and so I bought it. It's not. I mean, as the custodial services make their rise, which they most likely will, because those the the fringe is fringe for a reason. Most of the people don't give a shit, and so they're not going to. And so custodial services will make their rise, and and everything will be a okay. Like I, I honestly think everything is going to be fine, as long as the people that are running those custodial services know what they're doing. That's that's the thing. That's the new. They're not that's, going away. Yeah, that's, that's, like, they're yeah, always going to have the cohort of people that want exposure but don't want to learn anything yeah i mean that's just the way i mean just the other day i had um someone ask me like hey if i had a giant pile of money could you buy some bitcoin for with me for me and i was like you could just do it yourself man and he was like yeah but the you're what you're missing is that i don't want to and i was like oh okay well that makes perfect <laughs> you, you've done it perfect. just you do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, makes perfect sense. There's um I think too as people get older, right? Like I think one of the reasons that this the the crypto demographics do skew younger is that as people get older, you have sort of like an established set of skills, you know where your expertise is, lies and where it maybe doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I know that like one of my first jobs was like primarily making, you know, word documents into PDFs. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> hey, Lyra, um, say hello to this podcast, Lyra. Hello, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Um, I think that th that's a um, a common thing as people get older. And, you know, it's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily negative. It's just uh, it's just like they, they have their stuff and they know it. They have confidence in it and they move on. Um, and they want someone else to do. <laughs> that's her what's that, by the way. See, it's uh, not really what's that. Just grabbing that microphone. She wants she, it. Yeah, there it is. So Say hello. Say hello to and the people. Welcome to the welcome to the wild world of podcasting, everyone. This is how it goes down. <laughs> and being a parent. Oh yeah, being a parent. <laughs> okay, where's my phone? Look at it's right there. Go get it. Go get it. And so, I, and, this, and that's this wasn't even new. I mean, this isn't this is never a new concept because like this happened when we started mining, right? Like. I was really into the technology. I wanted to. I wanted to mine. Um, I wanted to make a GPU miner. This is at the time when um, ASICs just started coming out for Bitcoin. So I was going to make a GPU miner for Litecoin, probably yeah, Litecoin and whatever all the Quark, all the, all the altcoins at the time were. Yeah, Litecoin, yeah. Cork, yeah, all kinds of um, nonsense. Anyway, like I didn't have the money to do that, but Gray had extra money lying around. He was on the show a long time ago, uh, oh, and he, yeah. he basically financed it. And he was like, "I don't 30. care what you're doing. 
I, I just want some exposure and to be involved in something. So just, I'm going to give you money to make a minor. You're going to go do that. And, and <laughs> that's it. And, and in that right there, like you, if you rinse and repeat that process enough times, you get the, the emergent property there is some sort of third party or centralization. Like no, that, it's, it's, it's okay. all, yeah. It's, whenever that happens, you're making a concession. So like right now, like the base layer of Bitcoin, like getting into Bitcoin, quote unquote, what everyone says is being like working in a trustless environment and taking responsibility for everything, taking responsibility mm -hmm. for your own data, securing that securing your private keys, your money, and so on and so forth. And that's a lot of responsibility, especially if you put a lot of money in something. So when you build yeah. on top of that, say like, okay, we, we, just, we just established there are there's a cohort of people, probably a large amount, that don't give a shit about that stuff, but would like to be exposed to this. Mm -hmm. What could we build to service these people? I don't know. Do all the things involved with Bitcoin and just give them like a, a less con like a, a more constrained API. They they trust us to mm -hmm. use this technology, and so you just build every time you build a layer on top, you lose something, but gain something else. So for a user experience or um, offloading the responsibility of securing my private keys and data, I'm gonna basically pay a fee to someone else that does all that for me. Mm. Do you know what I think? Here's another theory now that we're thinking about this. I think crypto could save the internet. And I'm not just saying that just because I'm like biased to crypto, but like what if it gets that popular that all the bad guys spend all their time only trying to hack crypto stuff and the rest of the internet just gets to have its fun and be, you know, be be merry and be joyful. Taylor, go ahead. Be merry and be this joyful. Is all you. <laughs> No, no, I think that, I mean, and this is, um, this is sort of like this, this, um, I don't know, idea or like thesis or whatever, like that's been circling in my head for the past couple months is like, um, obviously we want this whole ecosystem and, and the things and the value to be more accessible and more usable. And, um, we want to like get rid of all the complexity, right. That, that even hurts my brain sometimes, um, but, you know, how can we do that without sort of sacrificing, um, sort of what the value actually is, right? And so for me, uh, and this is why I say it's like this thought experiment or this thing that I keep circling around because I, I literally go in circles, but okay. So if I think that one of the values of the blockchain, that's sort of a non-negotiable is empowering individuals and allowing individuals to uh, be in control of their money and to not be able to have like a, uh, uh, like a government or a another central entity, uh, like take their money or prevent them from using their money or, uh, any of those things. Right. So if that's a non-negotiable, then a lot of the custodial services, all of the custodial services in theory, um, are are sacrificing that are compromising on that and so while we do have have custodial services like coinbase which um don't just like check down your account willy-nilly um and and they have sort of processes and procedures and policies to be compliant and stuff like that at the end of the day um you know if you do something that is against their terms or against u.s law they're going to shut down your account they have to so while Coinbase like provides an amazing value to the ecosystem by getting people in, um, it also does compromise on some of the things that makes sort of cryptocurrency valuable. Um, you know, and that's the other thing is, is, is that valuable? <laughs> like, well, is, um, like is, is having money that nobody can, can stop valuable? Like, I think it is. I'm pretty sure that's why most of us got in this ecosystem, um, you know, and, and to what extent are we willing to sacrifice that or compromise on that, right? Like, is it okay if it's Coinbase because otherwise we wouldn't have the on-ramps or, um, you know, and is the line somewhere else? Like, is the line at, at uh, like, a Square Cash type app where you don't actually even, like, have it or hold it or move it or do anything with it, Right. I, I don't know thing, the answer to this. Yeah, the main thing know. I think like to, to to that is, yes, it's valuable. 
to a specific set of people. The main thing mm. that's important here is that people have options. Like they, anyone can choose. They're not, they're not the sole, that's not the sole method of doing something. And they're participating in a, in a, in a broader community where those who don't like those things can still transact with the people who do, who don't care. Like mm-hmm. the, the, the Bitcoin that I hold on Coinbase is the same Bitcoin that I hold in wallets that no one knows about. That's it's, it's, it's interchangeable. It's fungible. And that's really, really, really important. So like, like it's they're all part of the same network, and yeah. because of that, you have options, and so it 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 accommodates to people to, to to different people, and also allows you to slowly but surely, if you learn about these things, because I know a lot of people who started with Coinbase who now would never use Coinbase, and they would never have yeah. started had would had there not been an option to do something that was relatively easy for them to get in. Yeah, right, but that's the exactly. thing is that all goes back to the beginning of this conversation is that if you don't use something like Coinbase and you try, if you try to go straight to the bottom of the rabbit hole, man, yeah. it's like that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's where the kooks live. <laughs> that's a deep yeah. rabbit hole. You know, that's that's yeah. that, I think that's so then at the end of the day, if you if you've been to the bottom of the hole and you've come back up to the top. <laughs> You, th- you got to say, okay, there's there's layers to the rabbit hole, and somewhere in there has got to be okay for mass adoption, right? Like, because yeah. you know they're not hanging out in a nightclub in the Matrix. Like sometimes that's what if this community feels like. It's like I damn, it bro, wants like, to feel it wants to be that, but it's not that. It's not that, but they're trying so hard to be a nightclub in the Matrix. It's Follow like, the white guys, guys, fucking relax. What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways yeah, when you when you said um like coming out of the rabbit hole i'm like yeah yeah i do that like every day when i interact with like regular people in the regular world yeah. i'm like on twitter and then i'm like oh wait switch modes let's go okay i'm normal i use, swear i promise i still can't use crypto the way i'd like to in my everyday world when i'm buying groceries and shit yeah. it's still not easy well, at least for americans to use no, this because there's not. there's tax consequences and because of those tax well, consequences and regulation there's not a lot of businesses and services that can accommodate my standard life. It's going to get there. It, even if there weren't tax consequences, or even if you were so libertarian, you don't care about the tax consequences, <laughs> or yeah. so anarchist, I guess, um, you still wouldn't be able to, like, you know, buy your stuff or whatever. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that that's so early Bitcoin days, that was the goal, right? The goal was, like, as a payment thing. Uh, a way to buy things, a way to pay people, a way to a way to do everything. Um, and then it shifted over the years, obviously, to now it's more of like this sort of the store value, right? The digital gold, mm-hmm. hold it, the price will go up, you know, maintain your wealth, et cetera. Boring. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that Bitcoin has sort of like, it. they're on a clear path because store of value and digital gold is, is, it's a bit hard to do that and be like a payment processor or a payment layer or, you know, buy all the things. Um, but it is a little bit sad because I do remember like back in the day, uh, like a really small business would like suddenly accept Bitcoin and they'd like post to Reddit and like everyone would go buy their stuff, even if it was like bizarre, like not a commodity type Socks. items, right? Like socks or like the chili sauce or whatever oh, it was. Yeah, the hot like, sauce guy. That hot sauce guy made a lot of hot sauce on Bitcoin. Right? Like <laughs> but that was that was cool. Um and I think that like we've kind of I don't know if given up's the right word, but I think that it's not front of mind anymore. Um and I think that's a little bit sad because um if you really want mass adoption, right? A lot of people say, like, oh, if you want mass adoption, it has to be easier to use and you have to have this and you have to have that. If you really want mass adoption, you have to have the full sort of like uh, money cycle for like an individual. The full money cycle has to be in Bitcoin or in crypto or whatever it is. Meaning that um, uh, like I wake up in the morning and I like check my account and like my paycheck has come in and maybe my friends pay me back for something. And then I go out and I buy my coffee with my Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, then I go and I go to dinner and I, you know, on and yeah. on and on, it's all in Bitcoin so that you don't have, um, you know, right now, a lot of times people are thinking about, 
oh, well, if I buy, um, like we did this with the DevCon tickets, right? If I buy my DevCon tickets in ETH, when the price of ETH is like $180, that's going to be a really expensive DevCon ticket when ETH goes back to 1000 right? Um, yeah. And and I think people are, are making sort of choices like that more often than, than we think. I think that's um, good. Yeah, if you want to store a value, though, if you want something to be used, then you have to have sort of the inflows and the outflows because... Don't use a deflationary um, currency for that. Use a stable coin. Like if you need right. to rely on a specific yeah. amount of value for a long period of time, right, but arbitrary at point, inflation at and point, deflationary stuff isn't, isn't at- going to be the right thing. But at some point, I have to make the choice to purchase the stable coin with the ETH at a price. For now. Right? So in the you future. You can buy die. You can straight buy die. With USD. Yeah, but that's what she's saying. Yeah. Of course, she's saying, like, like with you, how do you get die with USD? Oh, Coinbase. Right. Coinbase. Oh. Yeah. With Coinbase. Coinbase. Uh, um, yeah. So, and, but imagine if you got your paycheck, right? In die. Right or yeah. in Bitcoin or whatever. <laughs> I'm one of the few people that can, but I'm also like at the bottom of that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, dude. you're way down that rabbit hole. But, uh, but so, you, so what happens when you have to pay your rent though? Oh, that's or why I don't do it because like, tax regulation can destroy my paycheck right now based on you know capital gains taxes like i don't it's so Look, muddy and murky that i don't know how to i don't know how to file appropriately for receiving my paycheck the thing is that these things take these things take enormous amounts of time and i think that like we're we live in such a time that everything seems so like instant grat instantly gratified but things are happening very so like backed everyone thought this backed was a disaster was going to be but their volume is increasing monumentally and now they're about to have it so that in the starbucks app you're talking about millions and millions of Jessicas are going to see now in their Starbucks <laughs> in their Starbucks app a little star- part where they can pay for their coffee with Bitcoin. That's going to be native in the Starbucks app. That's fueled by what Back's doing, because Back understands you've got to have it's Back paying you. Either- no, I just know what they're doing. Okay, I mean it's clear as day. They're 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 getting their volume so monumentally high so that they can afford to have these quote unquote, small transactions uh, happen for coffee on Bitcoin, right? So I think yeah. that it, it t- these things take time and yeah. people don't, and money is not meant to be hoarded. Like that's the thing that um, money's not meant to be hoarded. Money's meant to be used. Value's meant to, no, no, no. Listen to me before you start making noises. Value can be hoarded. Value, people like to hoard value, but they don't hoard money. Money is meant to dissipate on all forms you want to look at it. Look at look at drug dealers. They store their money in the ground and it fucking deteriorates and rats end up eating it up. Like money, is. money is meant to go away. It's just this medium of exchange that's representative of value. Right. Oh, that's but that's right. also that's that's I mean, in the US at least, that's part of the the Fed their responsibilities is to keep the rates at X percent based on the macroeconomic conditions so that people are incentivized to spend the money at a certain rate, right? Mm-hmm. And employ people at a certain rate and blah, 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 so that people don't just store cash under their mattress because they know that tomorrow it will be a little bit less than today. Um, that's like, that's basically what they're doing with all when they do like the QE and stuff. Like that's what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. That's the- don't know. QE is quantitative easing. Quantitative yeah, view. it's the new normal. It is the yeah. new normal. Um, they just lowered the rates again, by the way. I saw. Oh my fuck. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe it'll prop up the economy for the rest of eternity. Here's, here's something. That, like, maybe this is a product. Years, of, guys. Maybe this is a product of us getting older. Um, but did you think you'd be like thinking, talking, reading about money so much? <laughs> When you were, oh I don't know, mid twenties. Dude, I was the worst at like, uh, like the history classes, the political science class, like all of those types. Like I liked math. Um, I liked, I liked art, right? But the every the 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 I don't know whatever they call it, the humanities. I was like never a fan of, and now I spend literally all of my day reading about uh, history, political science. Like 
how humans work in general society change like i don't know how i ended up here like someone get me out of trouble, please. <laughs> it's so weird isn't it yeah i, know. I but um... yeah, I, think, I think the reason is is that in school you were like just like learning this shit and it didn't uh there's no really like tie back into the the real world where today when i read these things or i like investigate or i listen to the podcast um I'm actually understanding how it ties into like the things that we're building or the people that we're affecting or, you know, whatever it may be. And it is really real. Um, but I'm also, you know, I'm not, not reading about like, I don't know, the weird, like all of the wars and memorizing the dates. Like that's irrelevant yeah. to me still. I should have seen it coming, Corey. I mean, I've always like if, at 11, I started washing cars for money at, like 13, I started mowing lawns. I had a legitimate lawn mowing business every summer where I made like a few thousand every summer just mowing lawns and having clients. Like I should have seen it coming. But <laughs> to answer your question, like I've always generally liked money. And now, now I just like it in a, in a different sense, I guess. I never, so, I don't think I ever, like money wasn't the thing in my opinion. Like I was very entrepreneurial as a kid in ways that were that pissed people off typically like i would uh like i remember walking around school um selling lollipops and like i don't know six or seven <laughs> or something like that and the teachers got mad at me because i was selling lollipops and i was like well those kids are selling lollipops like yeah it's for a cause I was like yeah i got a cause me making money the cause is me yeah i'm trying to make money <laughs> i mean like you can't do that and i was like they're I'm going to yeah. do this. And like, I remember we had like this, like I, I lived near a Creek a Creek for those parts of the United States. People that say that weird word. Um, like, and, and part of that, we found this like huge, huge deposit of like quartz crystal, like massive. Mm -hmm. And so I'd break these pieces off and I'd go sell them in school. I had the box of rocks that I would sell the kids at school. And my teacher was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm selling rocks, man. Trying to I'm selling, <laughs> listen to me. If you don't get it, I don't have time to explain it. What's okay? that diamond on your ring, on your <laughs> finger? You're selling rocks too. Dude, I mean, I, it's always here's a small story, and then we'll go into interviews. That I used to play this game called Age of Empires. Do you know Age of Empires? Everyone knows Age of Empires. Okay, I was terrible at this game. Me and my brother would play this game online, and every time we'd get our asses kicked because we died because I didn't make an army. But I had this gorgeous city. Like, it was gorgeous, and I had just all of the money. And he was like, dude, we keep dying because you don't want to make any soldiers. And I was like, well, I mastered the market, though. So that's what I, I spent time. Instead of making soldiers, I mastered the market. So I would, like, trade my wood for gold and then vice versa, the ore, and trade all that stuff. And so we'd always get our asses kicked, and then he'd look at the stats at the end of the game, and he's like, how in the hell did you die with 30,000 gold? And I was like, I don't know, man. I've just been playing that market. He's like, this isn't how the game works. So then we had to like, so then what happened is we got I smart. See your brother being so mad right now. He was really mad. And then what happened is we got smart. I was like, look, if you're going to build the army, I'll just make the money. So why don't you build the army and all the defenses and I'll just funnel you money to make this huge ass army. And we figured out the world by playing <laughs> Age of Empires. <laughs> and so he would defend my market building and he was like, and so I would like watch the market and trade my wood for gold and vice versa. And and that's how I learned about money, Age of Empires 3. I want to pick and this that, back up it. at the end of the interview. I, at the other side of the round table, I want to pick this back up. This is something I've okay. said a few times, but I keep repeating it or wanting to repeat it because I think it's it's an important thing that crypto has has done in the past and I think will continue to do. No doubt. So uh, today's interview is with uh, Eric Fulton from Keybase. It was created in 2016. Uh, Keybase is an end-to-end -end encryption messaging and public chat service. <laughs> Corey is your enemy. We interviewed <laughs> we interviewed Corey's enemy. Uh, um, my enemy. I like what they do. They're great. They're a great platform. That's right. Your friend. That's all on, that's all on stellar choices. But um, yeah, it, it's talk about that in the interview. The yeah, did you talk about Stellar yeah. in the interview? Why they chose to use Stellar? Yeah. We did. We did. Okay. We did discuss that. Um, and there's something else we talked about, but I can't remember. That's why you're going to listen to it right now, audience. So uh, here it is. And hello, everyone. Welcome back 
to another one of the Bitcoin Podcast's interviews. And uh, this week, our very special guest is the identity evangelist himself, Eric Poulton of Keybase. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. So, so we like to start our interviews pretty basic, like all interviews start. And that is, what were you doing before crypto? And what it? why did you switch as soon as you heard about the awesomeness that is Bitcoin and Ethereum and the whole nine? You said, you know what, I'm going to stop doing all that and I'm going to contribute to cryptocurrency, blockchain tech, whatever you want to call it. Give us a little bit of your background, man. Who 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 is Eric Fulton? Oh, absolutely, I appreciate that. Uh, I would say I made the classic mistake of of many people when Bitcoin first came out and played around, mined a block, and went, "Man, I just spent three dollars on power, and I don't I don't see an immediate value for this. I'll check back in a little bit." Uh, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made given the current state of cryptocurrency. So after that. Initial failure. Uh, I kept an eye on it and, and watched and watched and, you know, loving all things technology. I, I personally started out as uh, doing information security and hacking and just saw an immediate need and and use for cryptocurrency. And so I think it was right around when Bitcoin was hitting 30 or $40 uh, a coin. I went, you know what, this has legs. This is something I'm interested in. Uh, I love both cryptocurrency and cryptography for personal privacy uses and, and jumped in. That was probably... Well, eight, six, six to eight years ago at this point, time flies when you're having fun. Ooh, that's a long, that's a mighty long time. I think, I think. Yeah, I love it. Ooh, man. I mean, I wish, I wish I invested OG, (laughs) but (laughs) I think, I think many people do. Thank Yeah. Thankfully I'm doing my part now. I started, um, about what, three, four, five months ago at Keybase. Uh, I, I see a, an imminent need for encrypted communication and I think they have a great implementation and want to be a part of creating a um, you know, platform of crypto for the masses. So why do they call you the identity evangelist? Ooh, because I love to preach <laughs> about identity, about cryptography, cryptocurrency, personal privacy. They're all, they're all commingled. Um, to speak a little bit about Keybase, if people haven't looked at it before, you can think of it as end-to-end encrypted chat. Um, you know, versus some of the other chat programs out there, it's not softer than Tofu, which is trust on first use. We allow users to have an identity chain and prove themselves across the internet, so that when I send Bitcoin to you or say one of our co-founders, Max or Chris, I know who it is that I'm talking with. Um, and thankfully, more recently. Keybase received a grant from the Stellar Development Foundation. And we've done a lot to integrate the ability to send uh, Stellar Lumens in and out of the application, which is creating a lot of, I, I think, mainstream applicability uh, and use of cryptocurrency kind of on a, on a day-to-day basis. So when, you, when you're doing this preaching, is it like, are you the guy that's standing on the box and everybody's just walking. Do you feel like everybody's just walking past you and maybe picking up a pamphlet and maybe not? Or do you, know, you have an audience? <laughs> uh, you know, the audience is people who self-select. And I, I think we live in an age where self-selection is becoming more and more uh, mainstream. 20, 20 years ago, cryptography was seen as a tinfoil hat type activity. Why would you encrypt your email? Why would you worry about your government reading your your messages, your texts, etc. And now with all these revelations come to light, uh, and I would say really there's there's a massive initial shift in pre-snowed and post-snowed. Uh, I helped put together a, a state-sponsored bill on privacy and got laughed out of the room. One of the, the sponsors of the legislation got a black helicopter award because we were asking for things like people should own their information, not the corporations. People should have a right to privacy, uh, and it was it was arguably seen as a little a little kooky, right? The idea that the government's reading your messages or that um, someone could intercept it. But doing information security, I've I've read a bunch of other people's emails, 
it's it's doable. It's out there. You look at you know online in the, the late '90s and early 2000s, mail spools are dropped all the time. And so, post Snowden, about four months after that happened, a lot of those people that use technology but don't necessarily understand it went, "Oh my, this is a problem." And with things more recently like Google antitrust hearings, with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, the average person is suddenly going, "Wait." You mean to tell me when I have a private conversation on Facebook, Facebook's also part of that? Mm. When you put it like that, like it's it really hits home because I like in my personal life, I try to make this important. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of an evangelical myself. And I try to say, like, hey, guys, this stuff's important that Facebook shouldn't be listening on your conversation, but they are. And I never can get it across that easy. But like if you're trying to have a conversation, it's as simple as that old playground. It's an A and B conversation and you should see your way out of it. Facebook, that's the way it should go. But that's not the way it goes. So that's where Keybase comes in. Right. Oh, absolutely. What's um? there's a what's what's that new app uh, that Facebook came out with? Was it called Yarn? Am I, is, am I correct on that? I have no idea what Zuckerberg does anymore. I stopped trying to keep up. <laughs> right. Uh, I have uh, an account just for posterity, but it's not not something I'm into. But they created a, a new application, and I it was just it seemed like such a Trojan horse. And, I, and I'm definitely a skeptic because once you see the abuses of corporations or you know state sponsored hackers or or anyone that could read your communications. Suddenly you go, okay, when I see this advertising, Facebook's new ultra private sharing, only you and your closest friends can share secrets and photos. I, like in my head, I automatically uh, or automatically add like you, your friend, your closest secrets and Facebook, right? Like they're pitching this platform as a, an online place. They understand people don't share private moments on Facebook anymore. And, and so they're trying to create a new walled garden for people to do that without telling them that they're, they're still included in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so what Keybase is, it's it's end-to-end -end, uh, encrypted chats. So it, when you send it off to another party, we operate the servers, but the chat client is open source, it's auditable, the crypto is publicly vetted, and you can feel confident knowing that your message isn't going to be intercepted along the way. So let's, without getting too like deep into, I guess, the weeds of it how does it how does it do this like it, it can't be easy we've been using so as a as a community we use slack we've been using slack for probably three years for the podcast just as a place for our community to get together and talk about all things crypto and share stupid memes and laugh at roger bear and <laughs> uh, but keybase looks like it does all this not only free, but in a way where we can integrate some of our characteristics as a crypto community as well. Like there's wallet integrated. There's, you know, it's very secure. Can we can we talk about Keybase just a little bit? Let's brag on Keybase. Oh man, thank you. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the things I, I want to do, I want to make sure that I don't knock other applications. I think depending on people's use cases, there's a time and use for everything, but. But a lot of what my evangelism about Keybase is, is when you know there's a better product out there and a more secure product out there, you should overcome the, the, the inertia to move to it. The idea with Slack, I have friends that work at Slack. It's a great company. But the thing is, your information is not encrypted. We, we see it time and time again how you know I like to believe that and I want to believe that Slack is treating your information with respect, but I have no way of knowing that. Much like... Uh, I wanted to believe that Equifax was treating my social security number with respect, but we, we know how that turned out. Mm -hmm. we, we find time and time again as corporations create these silos of information that are becoming more and more valuable, then it's more and more valuable for someone to break in, to steal that information. And as technology evolves so quickly, you can be secure one day and not secure the next. In, in fact, with, with the prevalence of O days out there, all of us are probably sitting around relatively unsecure. It's just only defense in depth and cryptography keeping us safe. And so the idea, the idea with Keybase, it, it does a lot of different things that are applicable and helpful to the everyday person. So for the very first, just the value proposition of 
do I want my conversations accessible by a third party? And that goes back to the classic, why, if you're not afraid of the government reading your messages, then why worry if they read it? And I think that's a very, very false, false statement. And, and, and I think people that listen to your podcast and those that self-select into this community inherently understand <laughs> all the things that are wrong with that. But a very good way to tie it home, uh, our CEO, Max, actually said it well very recently with the idea of locks. Um, and he was speaking to the government is trying to weaken crypto or ask for backdoors, like with WhatsApp recently. Uh, and the idea with that is when you, when you take a digital idea and translate it to something physical, suddenly people have a lot closer grasp on on why whatever thing is happening is bad. And in the idea of cryptography, when you're asking someone to weaken it or add a back door in, a really good example is the house lock. If if you're a local towns person or mayor or, or government came up to you and said, hey, uh, I know you have this lock and you have this key and you feel secure, but you need to, to make it like a TSA key so that we can walk in your house whenever we want. Hmm. Would you not be upset by that? Yeah, I'd be I'd be a little bit pissed off. Wow, incredibly. Or or the idea of in your home. I mean, and this is <laughs> we're we're almost living in nineteen eighty four instead of the government installing the listening devices into our home, we're buying them with with the most <laughs> recent um, <laughs> if you've seen on, on the top of Hacker News where a Google executive said, You should probably tell people that come to your house there's a microphone listening, and that's that's obscene. That's that's my, my mind is legitimately blown by how much people have traded privacy for convenience. And so Keybase is trying to make that not a trade-off. You can have privacy. You can have cryptography. You can use cryptocurrency amongst you, your friends, your peers, and other businesses. And it's not a really hard thing to do. When Bitcoin first came out, people were mailing checks and, and sending crypto. And there was a lot of risk involved. Now, in Keybase, I can just type plus 50 XLM. Uh, your username and sends you currency. Mm, it's that's it's awesome. truly becoming. Oh, uh, it's that's one of our, our our most recent features, and it is it's killing it. We can we can already we can't see, but on the Stellar network, you can see a lot of transactions uh, are happening because people have Stellar, they're exchanging it, and it's all tied in together. So I can go plus ten USD this other person, and it'll go in and out, and so. We've seen a huge benefit from partnering closely with Stellar uh, just in seeing mainstream crypto adoption. Because before, it, I'm not going to say it was hard for people that have opted in to buy cryptocurrency and to understand it. It's it's not that hard. But to try to get your parents to use it or, or someone who's not a technology early adopter, it's always been a struggle. And now you kind of, you've blended this idea of chat and storage and identity and all three kind of combined to make a secure platform for users. So looking down the line, how do you square off against the powers to be that are going to say, hey, we need a back door into that crypto. People can't just have conversations freely around here. Uncle <laughs> Sam needs to get in on that action. How do you fight back there? <laughs> Uncle Sam loves getting in on that action. Yeah, I would does. say, you know, and that's and that's a hard one, right? Because that's that's not necessarily a technical program problem. That is a that is a Societal. political problem, and there's that's definitely some, yeah. And cool. so, I, I would probably say having an, an open source client where you can see and have reproducible bills and look at it yourself and go, "There's no backdoor." I can look at this. Not not just it's not just oh, I trust Keybase, it is, I can look at this and know that there's not one. Now, that said, then it comes to what are those uh, warrantless or those super secret, uh, oh, I forget the name of them, but the super secret warrants where the government just says, you can't tell anyone and we're going to make you do it. And oh, that's kind yeah. of why we've developed in the way that we wanted to, right? Is we wanted to make sure that if they did tell us and force us to do something like that, it would be obvious to the users which is the best, most open way you can do it. And as you, a citizen, I, I take issue with the whole extra legal thing that we've somehow allowed in our current time and day. We've sacrificed 
uh, our privacy for safety and we have neither privacy nor safety. And I'm definitely stealing that quote, but it's incredibly applicable to life right now. It really is. And the thing that blows my mind is that we're just so we're so embattled with new all the time. And what I mean is that is like there's something new and flashy, like every 10 days, it feels like. And it's like you're just so super saturated with stuff, whether it be information or actual physical things or events that there's really no time to slow down and think about the suck that we're creating. (laughs) <laughs> and that kind of like, like you mentioned, like the, 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 uh, the convenience, right? I think about the stuff, like the shit that I asked Siri is stuff that would take me five seconds to do is like, Hey, Siri, start a timer. And it's like, well, <laughs> I talked into my watch to do that. I literally could just push the button on my watch to do that. Like it doesn't, I don't need an assistant <laughs> for that. And then I got my parents and Alexa like four years ago, three, four years ago. And all they do is ask it to play Motown music. And I'm like, well, <laughs> like, what's the point of having this invasive microphone in their house when all they're asking it to do is play Motown music or the weather when they have a thermostat like on the wall? So it's like, wow, we just invited this invasion of privacy into our lives for the sake of it being bright and shiny. But it really... I bet you if you boil down to it, people aren't using these things for a lot because they're also kind of dumb. I ask Siri stuff and Siri's like, I got no clue, bro. I had to Google that. Let me tell you what I found. So it's just it's amazing that that we just keep letting that go on without doing anything I, about it. So I agree when when privacy or not with privacy, when when it's so darn convenient right like when it first comes out you think oh that's awesome i can just set a timer with my voice and it is awesome uh or the idea of cell phones like the very idea of the this fantastically powerful computer we carry around with us is amazing but it was i I would say kind of the these technologies as they came out they came out in one company's power right we have these oligarchs of technology between google and Amazon and, and Apple. And what I what I love, the existing time that we live in right now is there's now effectively power to the people in technology and cryptography. We no longer have just Twitter. We've got Mastodon. We no longer have an, an equality alternative, I should know, because before, right, if you if you wanted to not have a Google or Apple cell phone, you were really subjugating yourself to a, a mediocre phone. Probably. I've heard good things about the window phone, but but maybe further down the stack, right? Uh, even though they discontinued that. But but now we've got projects like the the LibreM phone, the the Pine Pine phone. I'm very excited about to where I can have a a phone that is more open source, that respects my privacy, that I can install Keybase on and feel comfortable in knowing that I could audit the software, that I could look at what's going on and see if if my information is being abused the same for the same for uh the the voice assistants open source voice assistants i don't know if they're there yet it's been a while since i've checked in on it but they're catching up with the quality of of what's out there commercially and so it's something it's a convenience that i'd like even if it's just as dumb to say hey siri play a fart sound uh (laughs) but i want i want that done through my server and I want to have control over my DNS and, and my records and my information because it's mine. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, Facebook and Google have been copping profits off my information. At the very least, I should get a cut or say no. Yeah, I agree. Like, what is it? Possession is nine tenths of the law or whatever that stupid saying is. I feel like my data <laughs> I, just got robbed away from me. Like, and I know I, I know I gave it away through terms and conditions. But still, like, come on now, it's kind of slick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Apple. that. It's like that South Park episode where they uh, they have the Eula, right? Like South Park's a good <laughs> mirror of, of <laughs> where we're at. Absolutely, South Park is kind of genius. Uh, as the years go on, well, I guess I'd ask just two more quick questions. I hate to cut it short because, man, this is right up our alley i know i'd like to have you back if you could speak with Corey because this is like his life's passion right now is providing a platform for communities to grow and build without you know unwanting p 
people listening in on that growth in that communication. So it'd be good to have you back. But I guess two questions. What cryptos work in Keybase like currently? And after that, in 10 words or less, can you describe Bitcoin? Ooh. Or crypto? Uh, or crypto. Yeah, I'm gonna, so the first one, um, right now it is, we've got a very good Stellar wallet. And what's very useful about that as you know, all the cryptocurrencies have a lot of different value propositions that they each individually bring. And one of the big things that Stellar brings to the table is fluidity between different currencies with their tethers. And so in my Stellar wallet, I can also hold US dollar tethers or Chinese renminbi tethers. And so I'm not, one of the early issues I had with Bitcoin is it's not necessarily a value store because it, it fluctuates. It's maybe more, I mean, there's a lot of different things that could be described as, but a, a struggle of, of holding a currency in, in the crypto is it can go up and it can go down. And one of the nice things about Stellar is it's a relatively stable price on its own and you can get in and out of the actual cryptocurrency and into a, a tethered currency rather quickly. And, and that's super valuable. So I can, I can hold in my Stellar wallet, uh, Ethereum tethers, Bitcoin tethers, uh, US dollar tethers. So I, there's a lot of value in that. And what is, what is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to me? I, I'm going to choose the, the abstract answer and, and say it is freedom. Uh, it is individual opportunity to take back how they spend their money, how their money is used and prevent almost nation state level abuse of both currency fluctuation and stock markets and trade agreements, et cetera. It's, it's, I mean, in one word, it would be freedom. I like it. You had it at freedom and then you blew it out of the water with like 27 words. Um, <laughs> but you did have it at freedom. So we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, one of the, the downsides of the evangelism, I, I have to work on on less is more sometimes because <laughs> um, I can well, talk for hours. I hate to let, I hate to cut it so short, um, but thank you, uh, Eric, for, for swinging by the Bitcoin podcast. We appreciate it. We hope that you guys listening uh, check out Keybase.io, a really unique platform. I am definitely going to check it out. Sh- check it out. I'm weary to like migrate though eric because our community has been on slack for like so long i just don't want to lose anybody i'm scared but anyways Ooh. thank you <laughs> no problem thanks for having me on and i i hope to to come back and chat more in depth later all right man have a good one but and we're back we hope you enjoyed that interview with uh senor Eric Fulton from Keybase. Um, go check out Keybase if you want to. Or don't. It's your prerogative. It's your world. Uh, but it's like, it's, it's uh, if, if I were to say it's anything, it's kind of like Slack, but you could send crypto in it. Uh, which you could do in Slack at one point, but it was kind of convoluted. Um, Man, I do not recommend that. Yeah, sending crypto in Slack is not something I'd recommend. But why, D? I don't know. I just wouldn't do it if I were you. My gut's telling me no. That's that's why Slack is so, not made for that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Uh. So, Corey, you said when we were when we were chilling during that interview. Uh. Sorry, we weren't. That interview was live. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you said that you wanted to talk about something like investing. And, and, yeah. So um, you, you, we we're talking about like changes that the stuff has done with um decisions you have to make about the money you have. Uh, mm-hmm. Like if I buy this, like you know, Taylor was talking about, if I buy this um, DevCon ticket now and Ethereum's at you know $150, $170, it's going to be a really expensive ticket when it's back up at 1000 And people make these judgment calls all the time when they think about using their Bitcoin. It's like, oh, I sold a bunch of my Bitcoin to pay for this one thing when, and now it's back, now it's, it's at $20,000 and it, it could have been worth so much more money and you know, all that stuff. So like, while those are real decisions you have to make that 
have to do with where you are in your life at that time. I'm very thankful, um, especially if like if the ICO boom had any positives whatsoever. It taught a, tre- a tremendous amount of people, a tremendous amount of younger people, an entire generation on how to think about the money that they have and how it's working for them currently, how to diversify it across different things, how to judge where they put their money, and then how to judge how to, how to potentially take it out. And they learned a lot of hard lessons in terms of losing money or being greedy or not making their life better because of uh, a, a future that wasn't promised to them. Uh, but from my experience growing up, it's incredibly rare for anyone under the age of like 45 to even start thinking about those things. And, and mm-hmm. we, had a, we had an entire ecosystem of everyone yeah. constantly thinking about these things and thinking about how to make your money work best for you. And I think that's just a valuable skill to have. Yeah, it is. It also teaches you how to practice. And what I mean by that is like, you know, uh, being fiscally, I guess, educated or, you know, practicing good fiscal responsibility that you've got to practice that you get every month, you get an opportunity to practice making the right decisions with your money. Right. And, and crypto kind of taught people like, Hey, if you're not reevaluating your money on a monthly basis, at least you fucking up, you fucking up big time. (laughs) <laughs> right. So yeah. uh, I think that's kind of uh, it's, it's it's what it did because people just sat and they waited. And then by the time they got back around to looking, they were like, wait a second, my big number is small now. <laughs> what what happened? Yeah. <laughs> and with crypto, you can't do that at a minute. So shit. So crypto will have you looking at your your number. Mm-hmm. And five times a day sometimes. That's that, that, that we went a right. little overboard. <laughs> like the. The amount of time people are looking at their block folio or whatever the hell app they use to look at their their, yeah. their number got to the point yeah. where like I was at work checking prices all day. I'm like, I got to work sometime. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just going to watch the price. <laughs> go nah, I'm going to try and figure out when to sell this stuff. Yeah. I just, yeah. I hate my, I don't, I don't hate, but my, the a firm I was working at, I told them when I started a project. They're like, oh, you're the Bitcoin guy, and like, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna quit on us, huh? And I was like, well, when the price hits about twenty thousand, yeah, I'm gonna leave. And they were like, whatever, Bitcoin guy. And then in like three weeks, it, <laughs> it went up, <laughs> and they were like, so the price is at twenty thousand, and I'm like, here's my two weeks notice. I told y'all that as you <laughs> thought I was joking. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, no, I mean my because uh, my see, I, I never like. I didn't make like a huge investment in Bitcoin, right? Like I didn't take my like hard earned paycheck and like put it in Bitcoin. I did the really, really smart thing of like earning Bitcoin, right? So we would like to like build little things, uh, design little logos, like whatever I could do for some Bitcoin. Uh, The referral fees, right? I refer all my friends, Circle, Coinbase, like, right? Um, but then, you know, come 2017, I have to walk in my accounts office and I'm like, hey, this thing that I never really told you about because it was never <laughs> that much money. Um, yeah. It's like, worth a lot of money now. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. And, you know, and he was like, where did it come from, though? And I was like, oh, well, like three years ago, like I made a logo. Like, here's the invoice for that logo. <laughs> <laughs> I made a logo like, for you know, 100 bucks and now it's worth yeah, 5000 like like, <laughs> and he's like, right, right, but Taylor, you don't have to like four hundred fifty dollars. Like that's it's less than six hundred. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. That's why I didn't tell you about it. Like, fuck, if I told you every like little thing that I made, like you'd be, you know, you I'd be me. your only client. <laughs> yeah. But it was insane to him, you know, that that's that that it had grown so much. And then he was like, you need like we need to talk. We you you need to get. Oh my god, like your 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 net worth, one hundred percent of your net worth cannot be in crypto. And so, is. <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Hi, honey. I was like, well, we'll pull some out and we'll diversify and we'll do all these things, you know, but like a lot of people know this, but maybe you guys don't like, we were basically living like month to month before crypto took off, you know, mm, like we worked yeah. our asses off, Yeah. but you know, then you pay the bills, you pay the rent. And then there's like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 bucks left. Um, 
so yeah, when I say like our entire net worth was in crypto, like our entire net worth was in crypto because like we didn't have a net worth before crypto. That's that's kind of where I was at. And that's a very right? similar story to what I was at. Like I was most yeah. of my net worth was in student loan debt. Like Yeah. Yeah, that's that's your net worth. Mm, exactly. That was my worth. My yeah. worth was debt. That's what it was. <laughs> Literally. Um but and so he was like, Okay, uh let's try to get you down. Like, right, so that like, you know, like uh if you take out this much then you can do this and we can put it in like super low risk stuff and it'll earn this percentage which can pay for this and you know on and on and on and i was like okay and so we picked a number i can't remember what the number is but basically picked a number like i don't know like 10 20 percent to like get out in the very short term um and then i had to call them back the next day and i was like hey when we were talking about percentages that was like the percentage of the holdings on that day right and he was like that's not really a like a question. Like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> like, it's been two weeks, Taylor. Like, what do you? Yeah, it's like, it's very different now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, well, so two weeks ago it was like 300, and now it's like 600. So basically, it's doubled. So I'm just wondering, should I pull out double of what we talked about, or the same amount? <laughs> <laughs> and this fool is just like, what is like? Who are you? How like, do I get in this? You made a logo. You freaking like what? <laughs> did oh he, man! Did he turn into um? Oh my god! What's that guy's name from Super Bad? The fat guy. What's his name? Jonah the... Hill. Uh, Jonah Hill. Did he turn into Jonah Hill from Wolf by Wall Street? <laughs> like, uh, I'm my job you know right what scene I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. I met this guy. I'm quitting quit my, my job. job. Yeah, I, I quit. I'm doing what this guy does. Uh, <laughs> I was. I was. Anyway, so we're gonna continue on these stories a little bit. I know you want to talk about something else too, but I have to, I have another one. Uh, like I remember talking, like say that we were in the same period. Like the crypto is going nuts, and little pieces of investment and and things that I had earned over the years had been adding up in a bunch of different places. And I was like, man, I have to track this stuff. Like I have to keep. I don't know where everything is. I don't. I don't know how much it's worth, and so on and so forth. So I need to make basically like a, a ridiculous Excel spreadsheet that tracks all this stuff using various APIs to check prices as they change. In real time, and um, as I try to introduce this stuff to my, my financial advisor, I was like, "So uh, there's this other, I guess, a couple accounts that I never told you about because it wasn't worth telling you about, and now I have to tell you about them because it's most of the money that we own." And she's like, "Okay," and I send her the spreadsheet. She's like, "Who fucking made this?" I was like. I did. She's like, this is ridiculous. This is like, <laughs> she's like, like real time price updates, like percent, like, per, like like percentages across all the different things and different accounts and what coins and all this other stuff and like how old it was, so I could look at like capital gains taxes. She's like, I don't know what to do with any of this, but that big number should probably become smaller into other things. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah, good. The, the first time they looked at my uh, the the Google spreadsheet that we used to track like all the back in the day, all the my Ether wallet money, right? Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it was like the money that came in, the money that went out, because we paid people only in crypto. Crypto only came in, but then you know you have the server bills and stuff, which is USD, and it, yeah. So uh, it was it was a really thorough spreadsheet. Like it was everything was on there, everything is tracked on there. But if you look at it and you don't know what it is, you're like, this is not accounting. Like, what <laughs> crack are you smoking? Like, yeah, that's what it was. Right? Right? That's, that's all that's all anyone had because there were no tools to do it otherwise. Right. I'm like, we dude, there's 18 freaking really decimals. Like, there's 18 decimals and I need all 18 of those. So, like. <laughs> 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 that's what people, that's another, man, that's a whole nother show. It's talking about the decimals, but um, I did kind of want to, one last thing I wanted to talk about is something that I tell. So I am the, I catch all the wild pitches from my personal, my personal circle. Like my, I call them my Facebook to Instagram circle. Like people I actually know in real life and they have crypto now because they've witnessed me talk about it for more than half of a decade. And they're, they're not bought in, but they're like, yeah, you're right. It's a good idea. I might as well own some. So I catch all their wild pitches. 
and it's always like, oh my God, the price dropped $15. Should I sell it now? And I'm like, dude, this is your money. Like I've already told you that. From, I'm never going to tell you whether to buy or sell. I'm only going to give you news in my opinion on that news. Um, and that's how it's going to work from here until infinity. Because once I tell you to buy something and you go buy it and you lose money, like you're going to try to come at me and I'm not trying to, I'm not going to have those problems. Right. So anyways, I catch all their wild pitches and, um, this China news hits and the price goes up. And then one of them that's like keeping track. And he's like, did you see what China did? Uh, China's like saying that crypto's cool again. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's just a president yapping his mouth, but I mean, I don't, or prime minister. And then last night, not last night, Thursday night, I saw a tweet come through that somebody has leaked an official document for China that is an official blockchain cri cryptocurrency trading license. So my response to that is like, oh, crypto's unstoppable. Like how they, that's a full 180. They literally said the opposite thing in 2017. China's like, yeah, no more crypto. The shit's crazy. It's banned, but we're going to give these ratings, but it's banned. And <laughs> you know what I mean? So is crypto unstoppable? Like this, I'm starting to feel like crypto is unstoppable. Uh, so depends on what your definition of crypto is. Like it. You make weird noises sometimes. Yeah, I do. Like, <laughs> wow. Your brain doesn't know what to think about crypto in China in the same sentence. Man, it's it's crypto is is one of those words that is going to turn into um, like web developer of the '90s, right? It's 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 so broad. It's it's a catch-all for a tremendous amount of technology and differentiations in that technology, which have incredibly drastic consequences on how it works and what the underlying assumptions like trust assumptions and security assumptions and so on and so forth. Crypto is no longer a good word to use because what China is doing or trying to do is not in any way, shape or form the same ideology or point or assumptions that Bitcoin tried to do. But mm -hmm. it's all under the same moniker crypto. And so mm -hmm. to the average listener, like they think they're getting something that gives them more power when in effect, a lot of the, the, the newer things that are coming out with really high like, media presence, like Libra and, and any type of Fed, any type of state-based coin is not those things. And it's very hard to parse. Yeah, it's um and that's why I keep, you know, like okay, so what 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 don't we want to lose, right? As this technology evolves, as the ecosystem evolves, like what's the where's the line in the sand where we go, okay, you know, this is a little bit maybe crazy ideological. Maybe we can compromise a little bit on that without sacrificing the actual value of what we're building. But I do think I think that that for me there is like a line you know around like <laughs> if you have a cryptocurrency that the government can stop or is controlled by the government like I don't I don't think that's valuable I think that probably fiat is is like let's just keep doing fiat for that shit <laughs> Well here's the thing it's like I've often said that um if all of this stuff only gives us usable asymmetric cryptography or better cryptography, then it was worth it. But I'm not terribly sure I 100% agree with that anymore. Because like, for instance, you can, you can make a cryptocurrency that's based on um, good cryptography where the user actually does have full control um, over keeping and owning the coin and having responsibility for maintaining that. But the underlying like, consensus mechanism what it's considered a valid transaction is completely under control and so what is that right it's like i guess that, that's not a sovereign money but the end user has full control over what money they're allowed to use and like you can make these weird things because right now like there's not a lot of things like you can't censor a bitcoin transaction unless you go through intermediaries like coinbase 
Right. And then you're not censoring Bitcoin, right? You're censoring like your Coinbase account, which, yeah. you know, that's not Bitcoin. Way, that's, that's a, that's a yeah. company censoring you within the, within the confines of that company. Exactly. And that's what, you know, I think that that's a really important distinction, right? Because um, even though I would prefer more uh, focus to be on like non-custodial products and products that really fully uh, put people in control, um, the reality is, is that like, yeah, if Coinbase uh, prevents you from sending to a certain address, that's Coinbase. Um, but if we look at what, you know, probably more and more blockchains that, you know, are coming out, like whatever China's doing, uh, Libra, right? Like it's very possible or it's, it's probable that the, at the blockchain layer, right? Like at the protocol level, <laughs> there will be, um, there will be a way that, that, you know, someone can stop you from sending period you know and it's he no also, longer he like, also is an example of that oh yeah they already did that no, <laughs> they've already done about? that a few times so that's it's already happening it's not like it's not gonna not probable it is happening that's the definition yeah. of how eos works mm -hmm. well in that definition the the, they're, they're capable of doing that type of thing so that at the protocol yeah. level they can fuck with transactions yeah i think yeah. at the end of the day cryptocurrency I don't want to use crypto quirk because you just said that's a bad word. That's a naughty word. It's just but cryptocurrency, <laughs> cryptocurrency is so far ahead of where humanity is that that's why we're struggling like this. It's not. Like, think about it. It's not though. No, no, dude. no, no. Just... It is though. It is though. Think about this. I want to make a product and I want to sell it to someone in Korea mm -hmm. right now. Right. That's easy to do. Right. I could say, here's my web thing. Here's my here's my cell phone case. I'm going to sell to someone in Korea. Now, how many fucking barriers does that money run into getting from them to me? Tariffs, it's, fucking it's like taxes, money. fucking yeah. uh, banking networks, all the above. Trade deals, like cryptos, trade deals, fucking there's all sorts of layers in between person in Korea named Mailing who wants to send me five dollars for my cell phone case in America. We're, it's just so far ahead. It should just be, hey, Mailing, give me your I like this one, your crypto routing address. Or here's my crypto routing address. You send me a crypto. Boom, there it is. That's it. Straight from Mailing to me. But humanity is like, wait a second, no, you didn't follow the layers. What about the tariffs? On the plastic, what about the? You see what I'm saying? Crypto is just a little bit further ahead uh, than where humanity is. In a world where it's only peer to peer, you're going to have a lot of problems. Like these, it's not like these things came up. There, these things are not made, are all made to like screw people over or for others to like give me what's mine. It's like regulation, taxes, tariffs. They're there for a reason, and a lot of other like larger community-based reasons on like one jurisdiction yeah, talking that. to another now based on the way those are made it introduces the potential for a lot of fuckery and that exists now but it doesn't mean that like the entire establishment is bad like I'm not trying to say the entire establishment is bad i'm just saying that the need for those tariffs as the world gets smaller the need for those things as the world gets smaller that need gets smaller yeah, as well i'll give you that I mean, right now you could fly from New York to the UK in six hours. Like the that? world is getting tiny. The world is getting smaller. We're talking to each other on three different parts of the United States. Yeah. This was, like the world is getting smaller. And so these rules that we had where things made a lot of sense, where it took three months to get something voted from your country to the other. And a lot could go down in three months. Like these, <laughs> these old things need to kind of be reassessed. This is what I'm getting at. That's all I'm saying. The cryptocurrency is so far ahead of that, that that's why we're dealing with these struggles. Now we're trying to drag people into the future. Okay. That's just, that's just my opinion. I'm in, I'm, I'm in with that. Well, China, you suck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, I'm kidding. Nobody listens to our shit in China anyway, so we can talk yeah. about shit as we want. Based on the demographics, um, there's not a lot of Chinese listeners. Corey, we forgot to do the things we're supposed to do. Like the things that what? are like plug ourselves and like, I mean, if people are listening to us, like they're, 
We're plugging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll plug, uh, plug away. We do a lot of stuff. Come join the Slack. Number up. one, join the Slack. It's the easiest way to get a hold of all of us and what we do and the massive community behind us that helps us do what we do. Yeah, man. We know there's lots of you guys that listen to the show and haven't joined the Slack. What are you doing? Like, I get it if you're listening to us while you drive. Go the extra mile. Pull over to Starbucks right now in the parking lot and join the Slack and then hit the highway again. Uh, for those of you listening to us while you work out, which is about 800 of you a week, I know we got the stats. At least I know like your devices. And the only way you're listening to us on that device is if you're working out. So I know that. It pause the treadmill. Well, that's a workout, isn't it? That's a, that's a, that's be, a spiritual workout. They could be using though. that device routed through their telephone, routed, routed through their, their audio on their car. All right, you fringe weirdo. <laughs> if, you're, if you're if you're a fringe weirdo listening to a device Taylor, routed like through your car, <laughs> okay. Not, so people do not do that, right? Yeah. What you listen <laughs> like tether their devices to listen to podcasts? I hope they don't, because if they do, yeah, that's... I listen. I listen. I only use my phone to listen to podcasts wherever but do I you, am. But do you run that through like another device? What do you mean another device? It's all my. It's always my phone. Oh, but I, it's solely my phone. My phone. I route the audio on my phone. Your phone's to the podcast. Many, machine. many, many, many different devices. Oh, you like talk- speakers. Yeah, speakers. Okay, right? oh, God. you're not so like, like routing out- to output computer. devices. Sorry, That's what you meant. I thought you meant you were like telling your phone to tell your computer. I don't know. No, Anyways, I'm not doing that. Um. What else we got going? Uh, listen to the other shows. Hashing it out is a great show. Dose of Ether as well dropped last week's Dose of Ether was a recap Tell of Dev's Um Just the headers is changing a little bit. A little bit. Um, a lot of bit. A lot of bit. Uh, so just to give you the rundown, Jesse and I kept reading all of these headlines, and we kept it. It started to become a dread. Of course, those are Jesse's words, not mine. Drudge. I would just call it depressing. Like the the headlines are so lame in crypto. Um, you're reading the same news written by the same people. A couple of them are bots and it's just very, um, it's a drudge. And so we decided to reformat that show. We're going to call it what the header and Jesse and I are first going to do a severe, long, in-depth deep dive into the Bitcoin white paper and then into the Bitcoin technology as it is today. And then we're going to do the same thing with Ethereum. So it's going to be very lengthy. Um, but we already enjoy the first one that we've recorded um we it was just a really fun show to do uh to tap into that curiosity that we both naturally have um and we're trying to get that one edited up and out to you guys as soon as possible so it'll be a different kind of flavor for me and jesse i honestly think jesse just got tired of my corny jokes um and he was like i'm tired of no one's tired of your corny jokes too i think i even get tired of my corny jokes sometimes Corey. so (laughs) um we revamped that show it'll be coming at you soon um, other than that, guys, thanks for listening again. Uh, please subscribe, do all the things. Tell your family and friends that this is the best uh, cryptocurrency podcast network on the planet. And we'd like that. Um, shout out to Zoe Saldana, uh, Zati Beats, Taylor Page. Uh, play the outro.